Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. And if you're thinking about getting a brand new DJI drone anytime this year, I wanna take you through their current lineup and tell you the pros and cons of each one at a very high level and help you make a good decision. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I hope you will hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get more videos about drones, especially DJI drones, because I do a lot of them. And let's get started. If you're new to drones in general, you may have heard of DJI. They are the undisputed leader in consumer camera drones right now. What I have in front of me is the current lineup of actually five drones. There is a sixth one that's not here that I'll talk about in a second uh, that are in the consumer level. Now these go everywhere from 2.7K in camera up to 4K in camera and have a variety of features and functions that are useful to different people. So what I wanna do is take you through a high level overview of these so that when you're getting ready to buy, you know what you're getting into with each of these drones and you can pick the right one. So first of all, I wanna tell you, all of these drones have a three axis mechanical gimbal. Now a gimbal is the device that holds the camera steady as the drone moves through the air. If it moves forward, the drone pitches in such a way that it doesn't, uh, doesn't tilt. If it moves sideways, it pitches in in such a way that it doesn't tilt sideways. It keeps the camera level and steady, and that's what gives you that amazingly smooth shots. And all of these do that really well. DJI is a master at get building gimbals, and they've incorporated that into all these drones. Where you really get into the difference is what the software can do on each of these and in the cameras. That's a big differentiator. So let's start with number one. This is the Mavic Mini. This came out in October of 2019 and really took the world by storm as a very inexpensive, uh, easy to fly, under 250 gram drone with a three axis gimbal. Now this was really designed at people who were just getting into flying drones and also people who just wanted something light and easy to take with them that they could use for taking selfies or doing YouTube videos. But it doesn't have a lot of the extras that these others have. And it was all also eventually replaced in 2020 by this guy here. But let's talk about what this one does have. It has a 2.7K camera, which means that it's in between 4K and 1080p, which is pretty good for resolution. It does have the three axis gimbal. Its biggest shortcoming is that it uses enhanced Wi-Fi for the video transmission signal, which means you're more likely to get dropouts and stuttering in your video signal than you are with the rest of these that use OcuSync 2 because of the enhanced Wi-Fi, because of interference or because of distance, which also means it has a shorter range as far as it can fly away from you before you start to lose a signal. So the two big drawbacks being the enhanced Wi-Fi versus OcuSync and the 2.7K camera. As I said, it's under 250 grams, which means that it can be flown legally without registration in the United States, at least as of the recording of this video. And it also has quick shots built into it, which allows it to do really cool shots like the Droney or the Rocket at the push of a button. Those are very effective, but it only has a couple of them and it doesn't have a few other of the automatic shooting features that these have. And real quick, as I talk about pricing on all of these, I'm gonna tell you the cost for just buying the drone by itself with the basic accessories and no extras, meaning that it might come with a few extra props, but not a lot, and it probably doesn't come with any extra batteries. Most of these have a fly more combo pack, which gives you extra stuff and costs a bit more, but I'm just giving you the base price for the drone. But at $399, it's a pretty good deal if you're just starting out and you're looking for something to get started with and see if you're interested, or if you're wanting to give this to a kid. I also wanna mention that this does not have any sensors other than downward. The downward sensor is just for landing, so it can have precision landing. They all have GPS, including this one, so it can land precisely when you hit return to home. But ultimately, if you fly forward into something or sideways into something, it's not gonna stop itself like some of these others will do because it doesn't have a sensor that will stop it. So let's move on from the Mavic Mini to the DJI Mini 2. In November of 2020, DJI announced the Mini 2. They no longer call it the Mavic Mini, they just call it the Mini 2. And while it looks very, very similar to the original DJI Mavic Mini, it has a lot of enhancements under the hood. This one has OcuSync 2.0 instead of enhanced Wi-Fi, like that one. And what that means is you're gonna get a longer transmission signal for video, and you're not gonna get interference when it uh, is in a highly congested Wi-Fi area. Now this one also shoots 4K, where that one shoots 2.7K. So it has a higher resolution camera. The cameras are essentially the same. They've just enhanced the software on this one, or maybe the internal workings, I don't know, but they look very similar, and the specs are very similar. But this one will shoot 4K, that one will only shoot 2.7K. This one, like the other one, like the Mavic Mini, 
uh, does not have any sensors other than downward, which means that if you fly forward, sideways, or backwards, or upwards into something, you're going to hit it. So you got to be really careful when you're flying this guy. But it does have GPS, and it locks in really well, and it does have a downward sensor, which allows it to fly indoors and also to do precision landing. Both the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2 use the DJI Fly app, which is a consumer level uh, DJI app. We'll talk about their DJI Go 4 app in a minute. It has some limitations, but it's also simpler to use. So there's kind of a trade-off there. But if you're using any of these first three drones, you're gonna be using the Fly app. And also with the Mini 2, they've done a real good job enhancing the remote controls. This is the remote for the Mini 2. Uh, this is the remote for the original Mini. I didn't mind this form factor, but I really like this one a lot better for a lot of reasons. And if you wanna know why, there's a full review where I talk about this controller in detail. So between the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2, the price jumps from $399 to $449, so about $50. Bucks. You're paying about $50 bucks more for this one for the drone by itself with one battery. And you also get one minute more of flight time and a little bit of extra speed on the Mini 2 versus the original Mavic Mini. Okay, third in our lineup is the DJI Mavic Air 2. Now, the Mavic Air 2 is the secondary big brother to the original uh, Mavic Air, and it also uses OcuSync 2.0. It also uses the DJI Fly app, which again is more of the consumer level app. But honestly, of all the drones here, this is the one that's jam-packed with the most features. This guy has OcuSync 2.0, it can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, whereas this one, the Mini 2, shoots 4K at 30 frames per second. It can do 1080 video at 240 frames per second. And if you aren't familiar with what frames per second means, it means how many frames it's capturing each second, and it allows you to do slow motion. So at 240 uh, frames per second, you basically can slow things down eight times. Something that takes one second can be stretched out to eight seconds, and so you can really see the detail in what's going on with that slow motion at 1080. But at 4K, it does 60 frames. This has a 34 minute flight time, which is amazing as far as, and it's the most out of all the drones here. So in terms of flight time, this one is the highest. This also has front, back, and downward sensors. Now it does not have side sensors and it does not have a top sensor. And you know, one thing that happens sometimes is people fly it up into things, like up into a roof or up into a tree. So you have to be careful with this one not to do that. But it does have front and back sensors, and if those are turned on, those will allow it to stop if you're coming towards something going frontwards or backwards. And then of course the downward sensor allows it to land precisely. It also does have a light on the bottom, which is nice for visibility at night and it does have the ability to fold down really small. And this one also has internal memory storage. So it's got an internal memory bank. So if your uh, SD card is full, or if you forget your SD card, you've got a little bit of room to spare and you can record directly into the drone itself for a short period of time. The other thing I need to mention about the DJI Air 2 is that this one will do hyperlapse and it will do active track. The DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Mavic Mini do not do uh, hyperlapse or active track. Hyperlapse is basically like a time lapse moving through the air, and active track is where it will actually follow you or follow an object that you select very precisely and stay in front of it or behind it, but just kind of keep it in focus the entire time. That is a feature these smaller drones don't have and never will have because these smaller drones don't have the right sensors to do that. The remote control on the DJI Mavic Air 2 is very similar to the one for the DJI Mini 2. It's uh, actually, it came out first, so the Mini 2 kind of copied the Mavic Air 2. And again, it's that nice form factor. It's that easy to put your phone into it. These do work with an Android or an iOS uh, phone, uh, an Apple phone, but they're very easy to put in. They're very well built. They have very long battery life, and they have the ability to also take the sticks out and put them in the bottom. So if you want to stash this in a backpack or something, you don't have the sticks put out, putting out there and potentially getting broken. So very well thought out for these remote controls. So going up to the next level and really moving from the consumer level to more of the professional level is the Mavic 2 Pro. Now this one has a sibling, the Mavic 2 Zoom, which I'll also talk about. And actually I used to own a Mavic 2 Zoom, but I gave it away because I replaced it with this. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But this has become kind of the go-to standard for uh, professional videographers and people on the higher end doing more things with it. One of the big differences is this uses DJI Go 4 instead of the DJI Fly app, which gives you a little bit more control over the way that you shoot uh, video and photos. 
This one has OcuSync 2.0, of course, but the big thing it has is a one inch sensor on the camera. So if you don't know much about cameras, just know that the bigger the sensor, the better it does in low light and the better your image quality is gonna be overall. This one has a one inch sensor, which is about as big as you can get in drones right now. And it has a lot of other things, including six directions of obstacle avoidance, including top, bottom, left, right, and front and back. It also has internal storage, like I was talking about on the Mavic Air 2, so that if you do run out of space on your card or forget your card, you can shoot directly into the drone itself. And it has a 30 minute flight time, which ironically is slightly less than the Mavic Air 2, which costs less. As a matter of fact, there are several things that the Mavic Air 2, which again costs less, does better than this drone. What you're really paying for with this guy right here is the one inch sensor in the camera and also all of the safety features, the different sensors on the sides. If you're wanting to shoot professionally, this is about the least expensive drone you can buy and still be considered a professional drone. Its brother is the Mavic 2 Zoom. The Zoom does not have as good a camera. While the drone is exactly the same as this, the camera is a one over 2.3 versus a one inch sensor. So it's a smaller sensor than this one has. And this one really with a, a Leica lens on it is, is pretty much the industry standard and the benchmark for where we start at a professional level of cinematography and photography for drones. So if you get the Mavic 2 zoom, you have the ability to do a 24 to 48 millimeter zoom in. Uh, you don't have the ability to zoom in with this one, but it is an optical zoom on the zoom, hence the name. And so you don't lose, um, you don't lose quality like you do with a digital zoom. So again, this one is $15.99 and the Mavic 2 zoom, which has all the same features except a different camera, is $13.49. Both the Mavic 2 zoom and the Mavic 2 Pro use this remote control. And this has been the same style that the Mavic has used since the original Mavic Pro. I like it because it has an LCD screen built onto it. So you have a lot of data in here and you can actually fly it pretty effectively without using your phone connected to it. But of course, those also work with this, the smart controller. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Let's wrap up with the Phantom 4 Pro V2. Now the Phantom 4 Pro V2 is kind of the holy grail of consumer video and photography drones. And I say consumer because this one is really pushing the bounds of being more professional. It has a one inch sensor. It has a mechanical shutter. And again, that's really what you're paying for with this one is the one inch sensor and a mechanical shutter. Mechanical shutters are going to give you less distortion during fast motion and they're going to give you clearer images. And also this guy is just a beast. It's, it's a bigger drone. If you want to hand catch a drone, this one is super easy to hand catch. So if you're flying it in a space without, without a lot of area to land, like on a boat, I actually prefer flying this off a boat because it's easier to hand catch when you bring it in because it has these big landing gears. It's also got more lifting power. So if you're trying to lift something with it, um, across the board, this is more like an F-150 truck and this is probably more like a sport SUV kind of thing. So keeping those in mind, they have the same size sensor, very similar cameras, but again, a mechanical uh, shutter and a digital shutter on that one. Mechanical being the one that gives you better imagery. Now the Phantom 4 Pro V2 comes in at the same price as the Mavic uh, 2 Pro, and that is $15.99, and it has a lot of the same features. However, there are a few places where it actually steps backward as well. It has a 30 minute flight time. It shoots uh, 4K at 30 frames per second, not 60. Both of these only do 4K at 30, whereas this one here does 4K at 60 for less money. So something to keep in mind. But again, you're dealing with better cameras and bigger sensors on these. So your imagery is actually gonna look better, even though the frame rate might not be as high. So this one has sensors front, back, down, and on the sides. It does not have a top sensor. So if you were to fly up into a ceiling or a roof or a tree or something like that, you would hit it with this. Whereas the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom has a, this top sensor right here that allows it to stop and to sense things above it. So you couldn't fly into a roof very easily. Finally, the Phantom 4 Pro does have all of the quick shots and active track and all those other features that are built into DJI Go 4, but it does not have internal storage. So you have an SD card in this guy. Once your SD card is full, that's it. So you gotta make sure that you have an SD card that has plenty of space so you can shoot all your great footage and don't forget to put it in there. Now the remote control for the Phantom 4 Pro V2, 
uh, is a different form factor. It's more of a traditional radio control, remote control, and it feels really good in the hand. This one here is the plus version that has the screen built on. This is a Crystal Sky screen and it is actually quite bright. It works really well uh, outdoors and it's nice to have. Um, I don't mind the form factor here, but a lot of people actually prefer the form factor of this right here, which is the smart controller. So the smart controller currently works with the DJI Phantom 4 Pro V2. It does not work with the V1. And the reason it doesn't work with the V1 is because the V1 uses LightBridge, not OcuSync. If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. If you buy the V2, you're getting OcuSync, and that's really the standard of what you want right now. This remote will also work with both the Mavic 2 Zoom and the Mavic 2 Pro, and it works with the Mavic Air 2. So all of these here will work with this remote, and I'm a big fan of this remote because it doesn't tie up your phone. It is $700, so it's not cheap. So, you know, if that's a if price is a consideration, you may or may not want to spend for it because you can put your phone on here and do all the same things. But I like the fact that it has a really bright screen built into it, kind of like this one does, but this screen is built down here on the bottom and it packs down a little smaller. Now these two do not work with the smart controller. This one here, which is the DJI Mini 2, may someday. It's a software update that DJI would have to do. Um, when the original Mavic Air 2 came out, it did not work with the smart controller but after a few months, they released a software update that allowed it to. Because these have OcuSync, all of these could work with it. The original Mavic Mini will never work with this because it can't work with enhanced Wi-Fi. So that's it. Hopefully you found this useful. I wanna go through one more time real quick. If you're on a budget and you wanna get a good quality DJI drone, the Mavic Mini is a great choice. Although I don't know how much longer it's gonna be offered because it was replaced by the Mini 2 which is about 50 bucks more. The, the DJI Mavic Mini is $399, the Mini 2 is um, $449, so another $50. But with this one, you're getting OcuSync and a lot of enhancements, including 4K that this one didn't have. But again, if budget is your main concern, this is not a bad choice. This is a good choice up next. And by the way, both of these weigh less than 250 grams, which means in most countries, as of this recording, you don't have to register them with the authorities. This one here is the next step up. It's 700 and something grams, and you do have to register it, um, but it gives you a lot of options, and it really is pretty easy to fly. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna say, overall value for $799, I feel like this is actually the best value of all of them. This is the sweet spot between those and this, if you're not a professional, but you want something that is a little better than uh, just a basic consumer model. When you move up to here and here, you can take these onto set and actually shoot and get paid to shoot with these. You could take all of these on the, you know, it kind of depends on who your customer is and what the expectation is. Doing weddings and stuff, sure, you could shoot with these. But with the one inch sensor, these are gonna give you more detailed and higher quality imagery than the rest of them. And so if you're gonna get into professional videography and photography, whether it's real estate or industrial or even mapping, you're gonna to wanna to go with one of these two. But again, to me, the Mavic Air 2 is the overall kind of best amalgamation of all the things that DJI has done. Plus it has a lot of things that these higher end ones don't have and a ton of things that these two don't have. So that's really kind of my analysis. If you can spend 800 bucks, I would go with this one. But if you want to spend less or if you want to get a Fly More combo pack, one of these lesser ones would be good, the, the Mini 2. And then if you're a professional and you really want to get into this as a part 107 pilot and get paid to do it, I'd recommend one of these two the Phantom 4 uh, Pro V2 or the Mavic 2 Pro or Zoom. That's a lot of talking. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your comments below, what you think about all of these drones and what you think about uh, drone videography and photography in general. Please leave me a comment. As I said, if you haven't already subscribed and you like drone videos, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.